Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Norton's theorem and see why it actually makes sense. Again, we start off with a linear circuit that has, let's say, two voltage sources and two current sources and terminals A and B emanating from the linear circuit. In this case, we're going to drive it with a voltage source so that the circuit looks like this. This is the assumed Norton equivalent circuit and we attach a voltage source to that circuit. We have the Norton current and the Norton resistance, which is the same as the Thevenin resistance. Now remember Ohm's law where I equals V over R and it's derivative equations. Let's start off with the assumption that the current, once we put a voltage source there between A and B, is going to be driven by the current of the Norton equivalent circuit and the current driven by this voltage source relative to the Thevenin or Norton resistance. So the current from A to B is going to be some factor of the voltage. In other words, there's going to be some equivalent resistance here, and we know that the current is V over R, so if we multiply the, the voltage driver here by some constant, we should be able to get the current that goes from A to B relative to this voltage source, so therefore your constant here is proportional to 1 over the resistance of the circuit plus we'll have some current that comes from the equivalent circuit. We don't know what the current is, we know it's some amount, so let's call that current C1. C1 then represents the current contributed by the linear circuit. Add those two currents together, and we have the total current between A and B. Now what we're trying to do here is prove that this circuit makes sense, that this is indeed the equivalent circuit of the Norton's theorem. Now we're going to try to find I between A and B, First, what we're going to do is we're going to find the current with A and B short-circuited. So we're going to replace or remove the voltage source by simply a short circuit, and then we determine what the current will be. Well, the, the terminals from A and B are short-circuited. That means none of the current from the Norton current source is going to go to the resistor. All of it is going to go to the short circuit, which means that the current between A and B in that case will simply be equal to, oh, but don't go to this one yet, we're over here, and look at this equation, that's my final equation right here. You can then say that the current here is simply going to be equal to the contribution of the Norton's theorem circuit, which is going to be equal to, in this case, I Norton. And we write negative I Norton because we know the way we drew the circuit here, that the current from the Norton equivalent source is going to be clockwise, and the current driven by the voltage source is going to be counterclockwise, so therefore, I plugged in a negative sign to indicate that this will be in the opposite direction. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to turn off all the independent sources. So if all the independent sources are turned off, we no longer have a current being driven here. This will then disappear. We'll have like an open circuit here. And then we can calculate the current around the loop here caused by the voltage source and the internal resistance to the linear circuit, which we know is a Thevenin resistance or the Norton resistance. The current then, using the current here, which is V over R, is in this case going to be represented by this quantity right here. It's going to be equal to the amount that's caused by the voltage source. We know that C sigma V is causing the current, and we also know that C sigma V must be the voltage divided by the resistance. So we cannot draw a relationship between the constant C sub naught and R thevenin. But in other words, C sub naught is the inverse of the resistance thevenin. Therefore, we can then plug that back into our equation here. Notice what happens now. The current between A and B is going to be equal to C sub naught V, which we now know it can be written as V divided by R thevenin, like this, minus, because it's in the opposite direction, the current contribution from the linear circuit, which has to be Norton circuit. And this then becomes the circuit equation that should be representative of the Norton equivalent circuit. And let's see if that's indeed the case. So here what we can see is that the current that is caused by the voltage source is simply going to be equal to V of the voltage source divided by the internal resistance of the equivalent circuit. It's going to be in a, in a counterclockwise direction. We're going to call that positive. And then we subtract from that the Norton current, which is going to be the current contribution of the Norton equivalent current in the opposite direction, therefore negative. Add those two together. That'll be the total current between A and B, thus proving that this equation does indeed represent the Norton equivalent circuit, and therefore 
That's how we derive the circuit and the associated equation to go with it. And that's how it's done.